This is Jeff Tavalacci, and this is my final project for Technology in the Curriculum, EDTC 525. When we think of 21st century skills, there's a host that come to mind. Now, not all skills can be met at all times in all classes. So by department, we have to decide what's most important for the skills of our students. In the math department, the goals that we prioritize are self-direction, collaboration, perseverance, and problem solving. While this presentation will address all four goals, our focus today is going to be on self-direction, the goal that gets everything moving in the right direction. To create self-direction, we're going to build a self-paced, mastery-based learning environment as modeled by the Modern Classroom Projects from modernclassrooms.org. To get this up and running, all materials must be posted at the beginning of the unit. So on day one, all notes, video tutorials, and problem sets should be posted and shared for all the students to see. A progress tracker, which I will share with you and teach you how to use, will be shared directly with the students so they can see where they are in the pacing guide. Some platforms that we already use, IXL and Delta Math, will now redefine their roles with IXL being independent practice and Delta Math being used for mastery checks. To create some fun and excitement, we've added a new tech, which I'll explain in later slides, called GIM Kits. Now, with all of our material out on day one, your weekly plans are now focused on meeting with individual students to meet whatever needs they have to keep on pace or catch up or go beyond. You need to be very patient and flexible with this model. Some of the advantages, though, when this is built, it can be run in person, hybrid, or completely remote. Absent students no longer have to check in. They can pick up exactly where they left off or if they're motivated, they can keep pace while at home. As I said before, the weekly plans are, uh, are focused so that you can meet individually with students to focus on their needs. Um, and it's built for collaboration. Students can see exactly where they are on the progress tracker and find other students that are at the same section and work together. The biggest disadvantage, the first year takes a lot of work and a lot of prep and a lot of planning. If you're uncomfortable giving up, to up control, you're going to have to get used to it. And to the outside observer, it's going to appear a little chaotic. By building a self-paced learning environment, the students take ownership of their learning and they get to work at their own pace. They can set their own goals as, as lessons are going to be laid out at different levels. Some assignments all students must do. Some students will go beyond and, and uh, hit sections that they should do. And those inspired to work in the field of mathematics or engineering can aspire to do other sections as well. So we have to create some student motivation to work through the material. And sometimes some student in engagement is driven by a new app, which I'll introduce called GimKit. First, I want to lay out a little bit of a structure for how your sites or your LMS should be laid out. Under each section, they should have linked to instructional videos. Although the uh, Khan Academies, I think, are necessary to post, they're not the ones that you're going to build your material around. Khan Academy, though, is built in with a closed captioning feature where you can change the language for your ELL students. Now, a 10-minute video I found, they won't watch entirely. So rather than a 10-minute video, five two-minute videos will get watched multiple times. Um, so shorter is better. If you have five examples that you want to show, I suggest five individual videos. Once they're done with the videos, they can move to independent practice. The link uh, to IXL, to the, the appropriate IXL should be directly below. Any additional uh, worksheets that either you created or you have somewhere else uh, so that they can build mastery before they get to the mastery check. Once they're done and they feel confident, they can log on to Delta Math. Uh, in this case, you'll see three mastery checks are available. Each one has only five questions. A minimum score of four out of five is required to go on to the next lesson. If they do not get four out of five, they'll repeat, go back through the notes, watch the videos, try practice problems again until they can take it again. Students may take it as many times as they want until they achieve mastery. Here is a shot of the progress tracker, tracker that is shared with the students. So by the student's name, you'll see if the student is 
ahead of pace, on pace, needs to revise or behind. It will tell which tell the student which section they should be working on and which is considered to be the on pace lesson. So this is already auto updated where the date will be up here. And as long as the date is before the suggested due date, okay, this is considered to be the on pace lesson. A link here, you can copy and update your class with, list accordingly. In the document hidden in the first 10 uh, rows is directions on how to use the sheet. Now skill and drill, while completely necessary, can get boring at times. So uh, a new platform called GimKit is something that I wanna uh, use to build motivation and engagement. GimKit can be used completely free and there's three basic games that you can play, individual, team, and something called Among Us. The paid version offers a whole host of very, very addictive games that the kids love. So click on the link and we can go to GimKit, select Educator Sign Up. We'll log in with our Google email address, or if you don't have one, you can create one with your own email account. Then you're going to see the left-hand side of the board. Dashboard will look like this. Once we're in, the first thing we're going to want to do is create a class. So select, select Classes. At the top of your screen, you'll see this. You're going to click on the blue plus button, New Class. You'll be asked to name the class, pick a color, and then click Create Class. You'll get auto-generated a link, which you can copy and share in your LMS or email directly to the students and ask them to join. Once we've created our classes, it's time to create a kit. So again, at your dashboard, you're going to go to the left-hand side, click Kits. At the top of the screen, you'll see the blue button, and we'll select New Kit. You'll be asked to name the kit, pick a subject, pick a cover photo, and then click Done. There are two main ways to add questions to, to a kit. If you have the questions pre-made, you already know what you want to ask, just click Add Question, and you can decide whether you want multiple choice style or text input questions uh, to use. Now, if we're short on time and we need to get it built right away, you can click Add Questions from a Bank, and it searches uh, from users all around the world um, pre-made questions. Now, some of the quality of the questions can vary based on who created it, so you're going to really want to read through them first before the, you add them to your kit. In today's PD, our pre-calc teachers are going to like this. You're going to be leaving with a kit today. So you're going to follow these steps. First, we're going to add questions from a bank. These questions have already been pre-made, and we're going to um, peruse them and see which ones that we would like to use. Now, once you click Add Questions from a Bank, you can go to the search bar and search the term unit circle. Okay, there's going to be a lot of, of choices to choose from. I would suggest just click on the first kit and start to practice scrolling down. We can preview the questions on the right hand side. And if we like a question, you can click the plus button in the upper right hand corner of each question if you just want to add that question. If you've gone through the whole set and you really like the, the questions that have made, you can click the big blue button at the top that says add all questions. Now we can uh, repeat and go through other kits that have been made and select either all the questions or individual ones. And once we have a good amount of questions, we're ready um, uh, to build our kit. Now I recommend going through the multiple choice questions and kind of editing them. You, there's an edit feature and you're going to want to make sure that the multiple choice questions are not that obvious. We really want the kids to kind of think. Okay, once you're done and you're ready, uh, you can play with your classes. Now, the way I typically use GimKit in my class is a replacement for where I would have used it for Kahoot. It's great for review of rote material, rote learning, uh, so your necessary units, uh, um, math facts, so times tables, your powers of numbers, uh, your unit circle, and, and other things. It works great as vocabulary review and a, a small GIM kit can make a great exit ticket. You can see on the uh, on your smart board or Promethean um, who's at the top of the list, who's at the bottom, and who you might need to check with. Now, had I seen this earlier in the year, it could make a great icebreaker. As you were doing activities when you started the year to learn some of the kids, you might create one that says, uh, 
who in our class has a month day uh, as, as a birthday in March, uh, who in our class plays soccer. So very easy to create. You could even have the students make some of the questions in something called an inklet. Now you can use it for homework assignment, but I want to build excitement for using this in my class. It's almost a reward. So I don't want it to be another app that I use, uh, uh, assign homework on, but it can be used for homework. Um, but I really use it for building excitement and engagement in the class. Our second goal with our mastery based self paced learning environment is collaboration. Students are grouped by section, not by ability. And the students can see in the shared document uh, which students are also working on the same section that they are. This also gives the teacher the ability to float from group to group and field questions. Uh, we can collect data from our apps and create individual lessons as the class needs for when we see that there's trouble areas um, from working with our groups. Now, notes, videos, problem sets can be worked on collaboratively, but mastery checks need to be taken individually. Perseverance is another goal of the department, and the mastery checks are built for that. Now, we're not saying that if you don't get four out of five, you fail, and that's it. It's you get a chance to go back, relearn, try new problems, go back, and retake it. You can take the mastery check as many times as you need, but you're not leaving until you've mastered it. Okay, this helps to build grit and determination and persevering to achieve a goal. One of our essential questions in algebra, algebra is, how do I use what I know to figure out what I don't know? This is the essence of problem solving. Now, the mastery-based learning uh, approach leaves fewer holes. When a student would normally get frustrated, they would just say, I can't do this, and let's just move on, and I'll, I'll restart in the next unit. Uh, we don't allow them to do that, so there's going to be fewer holes in their skill set when uh, we force them to achieve mastery before progressing. Now, as we have more mathematical tools in the bo uh, toolbox, they'll just become naturally better problem solvers. Although this approach requires a lot of time and energy in the first year, the second year you'll reap the rewards as you'll just maintain and slowly improve section to section to section. Hope you enjoyed this. Thank you. And we'll talk soon.